Florida prosecutors filed a motion late last night to have law enforcement interview a juror in the Parkland shooter trial after that juror told support staff that during deliberations, she received what she perceived to be a threat from another juror. This comes as we're getting new reaction this morning after the gunman who shot and killed 17 people at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in 2018 will be spared the death penalty. A jury has recommended life in prison without parole. For the gunman, the jury foreman said that three jurors voted against the death penalty. The judge will officially sentence the gunman on the 1st of November. Family members of the victims expressing shock and anger. They are suffering, and this result made them suffer even more. They've said it before, I'll say it now. If not now the death penalty, then when? We came here seeking justice. We were hoping for justice. And unfortunately, we didn't get it today. How could you not give him the death penalty? And I, I think that that one juror that, that voted for life is going to live to regret that uh, for the rest of his life. Pretty unreal that nobody paid attention to the facts of this case, that nobody can remember who a victim is and what they look like. I know every day because I see my beautiful daughter's face around our home in my dreams. And I miss her very much. Joining us now is one of the parents you just heard from, Tony Montalto, whose 14-year-old daughter, Gina, was among those killed in the massacre. Tony, you know, I, these are such, you know, I don't even know what kind of questions to ask you other than today, how are you processing what, what happened yesterday? Well, we're still trying to deal with the shock, uh, surprise, and disbelief. Um, quite frankly, how you could look uh, objectively, as the jurors were supposed to, at the facts. And uh, let's remember what facts are. There are things that are presented and verifiable by a third party uh, of this case um, and, and come to the decision that was, uh, that was presented. Uh, and certainly after such a short deliberation time, let's face it, three months of trial, barely eight hours of deliberation, um, I think that uh, somebody might have had their mind made up uh, previously. And uh, I think that, um, again, uh, how can you justify any mitigating circumstance that uh, allows someone to walk into a school to attack our nation's future um, by going after students and teachers and, uh, and, and say they don't deserve to be punished to the fullest extent of the law? Tony, there's so many, you know, there are so many differences uh, among the families of the victims, but it seems like in, in, in a vast majority of cases, almost all of them uh, do agree on the desire to see this person, I don't even mention his name, uh, Thank you. get the, the, the death penalty. Well, we sent our children to school. My daughter worked at, walked out our front door on Valentine's Day uh, with a box of chocolate and a reminder to eat it before it melted. Um, these teachers that went to work that day, they just showed up at work to do their jobs, yeah. to uh, help build our future citizens. And to have them not return home to our families was, was devastating. And then to have quite frankly, one juror who they said was a hard no, just to, to correct that, I think the one hard no led to the other saying, well, I don't have to make a tough choice. Um, to have them justify uh, the way that the killer walked through the halls, pulled the trigger 139 individual times, each time making a conscious decision to move that finger. It wasn't an automatic weapon. It was semi-automatic. He had to pull the trigger each time including the time when he pressed the barrel of that weapon up against my daughter's chest, just as he had searched the internet for. He got to carry out his plan. So he planned, he acquired the equipment, 
And then he went out and performed this cruel, heinous act of killing 17 people, wounding 17 others. And he would have done more, except that he said he couldn't find anybody else to kill. It's not my words. Those are his words. Um, you know, Tony, I just, you know, the, the, you know, how do you, I mean, let, I want to talk about Gina. Well, Gina was our, uh, our firstborn. She's the one that made us parents. We thought that was a job we would have for life. She was kind. She was loving. She was uh, compassionate, bubbly and bright. Um, often the first one to reach out to kids in the neighborhood. As I mentioned in my victim impact statements, uh, when Gina was 10, she saved the life of, of a little boy from drowning. Without being told what to do, she just knew what to do. And I think, uh, you know, it was unfair to the, to the victims when the court had to instruct the jurors to ignore our victims' impact statements, which was our opportunity to speak for those who could no longer speak for themselves. When the judge passed, uh, you know, rules for the courtroom uh, that said that we couldn't wear pins to represent our kids or, or the bracelets we've all had to, to remember them by. We couldn't bring pictures. We couldn't wear T-shirts. Um, there was a lot of restrictions placed on the victims uh, to make sure that this monster got a fair trial. And um, by fair trial means he should be held responsible for his actions. It's not that we should find excuses for the horrific murders of 17 people for an attack on our schools. What kind of message does this send? to other students and teachers, or to the next shooter who's out there. You know, we have to find a way to come together to help solve these problems, to come together as an American family. And that's why we created Stand With Parkland, accessible through standwithparkland.org, to bring together the middle, to bring together the people who want to listen to one another, find pragmatic solutions, and go out and make change. We've been fortunate making a lot of change in Florida. We've, we've helped make change on the federal level just this summer by passing the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which is an mm -hmm. excellent uh, bill for school safety. It provides dollars to secure the campus, dollars for violence prevention in our schools. It also provides mental health support, creating the 988 National Suicide Prevention Hotline, uh, creating uh, m money for more school counselors to help our students before they resort to violence. And then it had dollars for firearms to uh, help states uh, to increase the number of states that have uh, 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 red flag laws or, or, or extreme risk protection mm -hmm. orders. It uh, had money to protect uh, against uh, the straw man purchases that, uh, that allow criminals to get weapons. Um, that kind of bill was, in its name was bipartisan, is, is the beginnings of, of making change. Too often, we let this uh, prevention discussion fall into the far left and the far right. We have the far left yeah. pushing back uh, on, on uh, things like behavioral threat assessments and, and other ways to look for people who are exhibiting troubling behavior. And we have the right who pushes back on the firearms piece. Just before this, you talked about the shooter in Raleigh. I'm going to bet during the investigation yeah. that he put out a lot of uh, warning signs through his social media. These are the kind of things that a proper behavioral threat assessment will do. And in Congress right now, we have the Bipartisan Eagles Act, named after the mascot at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, which will provide increased funding to the U.S. Secret Service National Threat Assessment Center to go out and train throughout this country, to train local school officials, law enforcement, and mental health professionals how to work together to do a proper and behavioral threat assessment and identify the kids that are having trouble before they resort to violence. These are, Sadly, these are Tony, all things. Fail. Yeah. Yeah. And Tony, these are all things that are out there that that need to be addressed. And uh, I just can't thank you enough for for being with us uh, today. I, I send you uh, all the best uh, and uh, I just appreciate you uh, spending time with us this morning. Well, thank you for still covering the story. And please, let's remember the victims of the Parkland shooting. Absolutely. We spent way too much time Absolutely. the last three months talking about the shooter. Indeed. Not on this program. You'll never hear his name. Thank you.